Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the Catarin superfamily. Okay, right. So we're just in the process of discussing uh, the structure of actin filaments. So remember, I've just told you what uh, an actin protofilament is. So an actin protofilament is this polymer of multiple actin monomers, okay, joined together like so. And we were just about to discuss the fact that an actin protofilament is not just going to be a linear um, polymer of these actin monomers. Instead, they are going to loop round in an alpha helical structure. And I now want to tell you the difference between a right-handed alpha helix and a left-handed alpha helix. Okay, right. So let's start off with a right-handed alpha helix. Okay. Uh, so these ones are slightly easier to draw than the uh, left-handed alpha helices. Okay, right. So, um, a right-handed alpha helix then. So, in a right-handed alpha helix, I am going to start at the top and I'm going to rotate round in a clockwise direction like so. Okay. So from the top I've started and I'm rotating round in an clockwise direction. So remember, alpha helices are these spring-like structures. Okay, so the polypeptide is going to fold around in a spring-like structure like so. So here, this is the back. Then I'm looping back out of the page towards you. I'm at the front now. Now I'm going back to the back. I'm coming forward again. I'm at the front now. I'm going backwards again. I'm looping back down. And I'm going round and round in a clockwise direction, as you can see. Okay, but that is if you start at the top, you're going in a clockwise direction. If, on the other hand, you start from the bottom and work up, you are going in an anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so from the top, you go in a clockwise direction as you move down. But if you start at the bottom, you go in an anti-clockwise direction to go up. Now, you might say, but surely that's contradictory because... Um, I'm, how would I know which end is the top and which end is the bottom? Well, if you think about rotating this another 180 degrees, imagine rotating it 180 degrees. If you were looking at it once it's been rotated 180 degrees, okay, let's draw it, then if you were to follow it, if you turn this into the top, basically, and put this one at the bottom, then it would also be going in, in a clockwise direction from the top. Okay, so if I bring this to the top here, and then what I would actually have is still a loop that's going clockwise. So that requires a little bit of visualization, but it's not too difficult. Okay, so basically you can rotate this around, and whatever side you choose to put at the top, as you go down, you will always be going in a clockwise direction. And that, that clockwiseness, if you, from the top, if you go down, that is what defines a right-handed alpha helix, okay? So it is well-defined, basically. There's no way that you could decide that this was a left-handed alpha helix. Okay, so now a left-handed alpha helix is one where if you, w whichever side you put at the top, if you work your way down, you'll be going anti-clockwise this time. Okay, so let's try drawing this. And then it, it, whichever side you put at the bottom, if you work up, you'll be going clockwise. Okay, so this one's the more difficult one to draw. So we now need to be going anti-clockwise. So at the moment, we're going back into the page. We're looping round. We're coming out of the page now. We're looping back around into the page. Okay, we're coming back out to the front, going back into the page. Okay, and now we're going anti-clockwise. And you can see that if you were to ascend from the bottom, you'd be going in a clockwise direction. So from the top, you go anti-clockwise. From the bottom, you go clockwise in the case of a left-handed alpha helix. Okay, right. So here we are going around in this anti-clockwise direction like so. So that's the difference then between a right-handed alpha helix and a left-handed alpha helix. Okay, right. So actin protofilaments are going to loop round in a right-handed alpha helix. So let's draw a right-handed alpha helix here. So here from the top, we're going round in a clockwise direction like so. And now we just now need to turn this line into the sequence of actin monomers. So here is an actin monomer. Here's another actin monomer. 
Here's another actin monomer, another actin monomer, another actin monomer. And in reality, uh, there are far fewer actin monomers making up one portion than that. Okay, uh, so let me show this uh, now in a more convincing picture. Okay, well, a more realistic picture. This shows you the principle, but in reality, the, these actin monomers are far too small here. Okay, right, so in reality, it's going to look something like this. So at the moment, this is the back. And then we're coming out to the front now, so we're coming out of the page, and then we're going to loop back into the back of the page, and this is quite difficult to show because it will be behind there now, okay? And then we're going to loop back out in front now, okay? And then we're turning around, and then we're coming back down here. Okay, so that then is the... Uh, right-handed alpha helix that you assemble actin monomers into to make an actin protofilament. Now, what you're going to do then to create a full actin filament is you're going to intertwine two actin protofilaments, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so, let me now show you this. So, uh, you're now going to have another actin protofilament that's going to intertwine with this other one. Okay, and this is going to be like so. So here's one actin protofilament, and here then is the other actin protofilament, which is going to intertwine with this.